So we are back to this spot the similarity. So we had a similar slide between car and bike uh, in the previous topic. So what are the similarities between these two cars? Apart from the fact that both are fancy looking cars, but so what are the similarities that you spot and then the differences? Wheels, number of gates, headlight. Yeah, the way the headlight, yeah, okay, looks and then the number of gears and what else? Uh, sir, uh, tires, uh, their company uh, and the body from which they are made of. They have same method like move. Yes. Yeah, right. Everything except for, okay. Um, yeah, so one is a convertible and the other one is sedan and they, okay, let's, let's see the differences, right? Um, okay, one has obviously, it's a convertible, so it will have this retractable roof. So you can put it on and off. And the other one, the sedan, it's, it has a fixed roof, right? But other than that, there are a couple of similarities here. So uh, both of them at the abstract level, so the pickup and the speed might vary, but they both of them can be used for driving. And both of them break, they play the radio, we have the lock and non-lock doors feature. Uh, and then both uh, can, the engine of, for both the cars can be turned off and or turned off. Right? So these are the similarities. So we are, uh, so all these next couple of slides, they are sort of motivation for the inheritance, right? And it also answers one of your uh, previous questions. So which was the first one? So can we have a default method implementation in the interface? So you, you wanted some piece of code where, which um, all the classes, let's say they, even though they implement, they may implement almost similar code, right? So in that case, what can we do? Right? So this is all a motivation to uh, build up that question, which you already asked in the last class. Uh, but we'll go over it and see what the issue here is right with this particular uh, example and the code. Okay, so now we have seen some similarities and some differences between these two uh, car models. Um, so they drive the same way and then uh, so looking at the different example flip phones and smartphones, both can be used to call, make the calls. And now um, so how do we portray their relationship? I mean, using code, obviously. So now we know that uh, convertible and sedan are related. So there are some differences and there are, but there are also some similarities. So how do we uh, capture this relationship in our object oriented code? So that's the question. So uh, let's discuss a few options, right? Um, so in the convertible, let's have a convertible class. So there you have your uh, put top down. So that means this is about the roof. The roof can be uh, taken off or it can be put it can be put back. And then there are some common things. The red, red colored ones are the similar functionality between convertible and sedan. So you have the turn on engine, to turn off engine and then drive. So in the sedan, the thing that is different is uh, park in compact space. So you can, I guess, park in a com more compact space than convertible. Um, so the next question that comes up is, uh, can we use interfaces here to model the similarities? Since both the cars have a few similarities, maybe we can use an interface to uh, push all these methods to the interface. Right? So you create an interface and then declare these methods there. So you have your turn on engine, turn off engine and drive uh, methods, so which are the similar ones. So you push it to the interface. but um, so as we discussed, interface can only declare the methods. They cannot provide the implementation. So each class will have to provide its own implementation or the definition for that method, right? Um, and it may or may not vary. But if it does not vary, which was the issue you raised last time. So if it does not vary and if it's similar, it's all, if it's almost same, then it would benefit if there is no reduplication of the code, right? So 
so let's say the turn on engine mechanism in convertible is same almost same as the turn on engine mechanism in the sedan so why do we need to uh, rewrite the same piece of code again so there is duplication and uh, the best practice is to avoid the duplication but if you implement it as an interface there is no way to avoid the duplication you will have to provide two different implementations of turn on engine even though they are uh, in terms of the code they are the same right? so that's the issue that uh, we are getting it here so and that is what is highlighted here right so these two methods for example they they would have the same definition so is there a better way to uh, avoid this duplication and reuse the code so that is where or that is one of the uh, motivations for going for in inheritance so think of inheritance as um, uh, as some, same thing that happens in the humans as well so you have your family tree and um, you inherit a few characteristics of your parents and your grandparents and so on so it, so it can be materialistic things or it can be non materialistic things so it, there can be a few features that are common between you and your uh, ancestors or there can be um, a few behaviors that are common between you and your ancestors so assume that uh, the features are the instance variables and your characteristics are the methods right so in that sense you can also inherit from um, uh, different classes so inheritance is models an easy relationship so a sedan is a car a convertible is a car a dog is a mammal so you can also have these hierarchies in the animal kingdom plant kingdom and so on right so um so the difference here is interface models as access so it models the access relationship so you can say the transporter um so bus or the other way around so car or bike it acts as a transporter vehicle so here sedan is a car so so it this inheritance models the easy relationship whereas the interface models the access relationship so that is the difference between these two so let's go on so in terms of the diagram right so uh, we have so this is the class from which you are inheriting so mam dog is a type of is a mammal again poodle is a dog labrador is a dog right so there are some common characteristics so labrador labrador since it's a dog it has all the common characteristics that a dog has but apart from that it also has its own specific characteristics right so that's why it is called the uh more general class and this is called the special class specialized class and same is the case dog is one of the mammals but uh, there are also other mammals but it has all the characteristics that a mammal has and it's also a transitive relationship so labrador is a dog and dog is a mammal so in turn labrador is a mammal and the way to represent these inheritance uh, is to have these kinds of uh, this kind of diagram where you have uh, the rectangle for the classes and this pointed arrow with the turtle head pointing to the super class so this is the super class and this is the sub class and yeah as it's mentioned here it's not bidirectional right so poodle is a dog but dog is not a poodle dog can there can be multiple different breeds of dogs and poodle is one such breed right so is it clear so far or are there any questions yes it is clear okay so uh, yeah let's move on so this is about the terminology right so you can call dog as a super class or a parent or a base class and poodle as the um, uh, sub class child or the derived class right so there are multiple names but 
they all mean the same so you can use this you can call this as the parent this is the child you can call this as the super class this is a sub class or you can call this as the base class and then this is the derived class so all all of them mean the same and it can also happen that the, the same class acts as sub class as well as super class so uh, dog is a sub class of mammal but it is a super class of poodle and labrador right so the same class can act as both depending on yeah depending on the uh, the class that it inherits from or it is getting inherited from so the other uh, restriction that you have is in java there can only be a single inheritance so we cannot have multiple inheritance meaning that um, dog cannot inherit from more than one class but this is possible in a language like say c++ which allows multiple inheritance right so java wanted to keep it simple and avoid this confusion so for example if you have a method that you inherit um now it will be hard to associate from which class it has been inherited from right so let's say dog is inheriting from three classes so now the method can come from any of these three classes right so Uh, it's easy to um, get confused, and then you. Uh, it's easy, yeah. So there can be some confusion as well, which they wanted to avoid. Uh, so and that's why the multiple inheritance has not been implemented uh, here in Java. But there are other alternatives which we'll discuss later on. Um, Excuse okay. me, sir. Yes. Uh, in the previous slide, or uh, or the poodle is or. Uh, inheriting from dog and dog is inheriting from mammal so what would we call this that uh, so this is not multiple inheritance right no no multiple oh, inheritance is, is when uh, you inherit from multiple classes at the same level so, so at the dog can, level poodle poodle can inherit from dog as well as mammal no po poodle has inherited from dog and dog in turn has inherited from mammal so poodle has not inherited from dog comma mammal right both are not at the same level so there is a difference isn't it so this is transitive and uh, there is there should not be direct inheritance from more than one class is that clear yes sir okay so uh so the okay so let's say if you have this going back to the previous example right so if you have this drive uh, method or the turn on engine method so if all the classes all the sub classes for example like uh, uh, convertible and sedan if the mechanism to turn on the engine is the same then you can move this turn on engine to a super class and have that inherit from to the convertible and the sedan right so in this case when compared to interface for example so interface you cannot provide the definition but in the super class you can provide the definition so you can move all the methods that are common to the sub classes to the super class and you can also provide some definitions for it so if you think that there are some methods that uh, that tag as almost similar manner across all the sub sub classes then you can provide a definition in the super class itself so that is um, one advantage and all the sub classes would inherit the public and the protected uh, methods and the variables right? so in one of the previous classes we discussed public and private but uh, we didn't discuss protected i think so protected um, methods and variables they are visible uh, to all the sub classes so that's the uh, visibility modifier right so public is visible everywhere um outside of the class so private the visibility is restricted to only within the class and protected is somewhere in between it's neither private nor public but it's in between so you can um if anything is protected then it can be it can be visible to all the sub classes So that's about protected. Right? Um, 
so there are some differences between inheritance and uh, interface right so in interface you you provide these uh, contracts which all the classes have to honor but in the inheritance it assures that or uh, all the methods that are there in the superclass they can be reused or they can be used in the subclass as well so in both the cases all the similarities are moved to the one level up to create these abstractness but in the case of the inter interface you are not defining the methods but in the case of superclass you can define the body of the method right so yeah code is reused here so if you have the definition in the superclass you can reuse it and you can only implement what is different so if it is the same as the definition provided by superclass you can keep it but if you want to make changes you can also do that okay now to um make some distinctions between the superclass and the subclass right so in the superclass uh, you look at all the common commonalities across subclasses or that's why we look at the similarities right so you gather all the similarities and you try to push it to the superclass so you have this superclass called dog in the in the example that uh, we discuss and now whether it's a poodle or a labrador uh, both are dogs and there are things to both of them that are common to all the dogs right? so uh, so you can move the similarities to this dog class and the subclass is what is called as a specialization as well so dog is the generalization and the subclass poodle is the specialization because there are some characteristics of poodle that are uh, unique to only poodle right so it's not those characteristics may not be present in uh, labrador for example and vice versa okay um so the subclass can also add new methods apart from the ones that it has it has inherited from the superclass and it can also override these inherited methods so we'll uh, look at this after a few slides um and it can also define what are called as abstract methods so uh, this, in, in this so if you use this feature then it's pretty similar to the interface right so we can declare the the declare the method but you don't need to define it so we'll look at this again in the next lecture so let's start with uh, the inheritance relationship like how do we um, build these classes that have the inheritance relationship like what is the syntax and how do we do it right? so we'll go with this example so you have this car and now there are a couple of subclasses such as van sedan and convertible so all these are cars but they have their own characteristics and they are inherited inheriting from the car class so car is a super class here and then van sedan and convertible are the sub classes right so let's um, uh, define the car class so you have the car class and then you have one instance variable which is the engine so the instance of engine is getting created within the car constructor and there are a bunch of other methods like turn on engine turn off engine clean engine and drive right so these are the methods of the car so now let's define the subclass so the keyword that is important here is the extends so using extends we can uh, define the inheritance or implement the inheritance right so you have the convertible so we would have to say that it extends the car class so extends again uh, lets the compiler know that the convertible is a subclass and car is the superclass so it's inheriting the methods and everything that is uh, let's say all the methods and instance variables that are either public or protected from car to the convertible right so this is the syntax for it so you can create 
any number of subclasses. So a car now can have multiple subclasses, but the other way around is not possible. So for example, sedan cannot have more than one superclass. Right? And that's the next point. So we cannot, a subclass cannot inherit from more than one superclass. Right? So for example, convertible cannot extend uh, car, four wheeler transportation and gas fuel transportation. That would give an error. So, um, but on the other hand, if it's an interface, so you can implement multiple interfaces. So you can say convertible implements interface one comma interface two comma interface three and so on. So that is also one of the main differences between uh, inheritance and polymer. Right. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, is this concept of multiple inheritance different in Java from C++? Because yes, in yes. Yeah, in C++ it's allowed, but in Java it's not allowed. Oh, okay. Thank you. So let's go to the second subtopic, which is adding new methods. So this is within the subclass, you can add new methods, right? So let's say um, you have the car class and sedan is extending the car class. So apart, okay, you have the constructor, but you can also have other methods which are not there in the car class. So you can add new methods which are particular to only sedan. Right. So, for example, here um, you have all the methods of the car are inherited and apart from that, it has its own methods, for, which is one, one of them is put top down. So, this is a method of the convertible class that it can implement. So, okay, this is a question, but I think it's pretty straightforward, right? So you have your convertible class and within convertible class, you have declared, sorry, defined a method called put top down. So now the question is, can sedan's object use, can use put top down? That is not possible because uh, you have put top down as an, a method that is exclusive for convertible. So it is not part of the card and hence it's not accessible for sedan. So just to summarize that you can add uh, specialized functionality or any new methods to the subclass. And that is generally the case uh, because you need to provide, there should be some differences between the superclass and the subclass, right? And these new methods talk about those differences. So if you do not have any new methods, then you should consider uh, dropping off the subclass. Yes, so uh, let's say convertible adds a new method to the class. So it has inherited a few methods from car and convertible adds a few methods. And now you have uh, one more car that inherits from convertible. So in this case, all the new methods that have been defined in convertible as well as the methods from car are now inherited in Porsche. So now this class has all the methods, so it has both the methods of car as well as conversion. So sedan also doesn't in inherit convertibles method because they are not uh, related to each other directly. So they are related through the car, um, car relationship, right? So car is the parent for both of them. Right. Okay. So now uh, the other question is what can these subclasses access? So let's say you have your car um, and car has a couple of methods. One is public void turn on engine. You have your public void turn off engine and then the drive uh, method. So in this case, so what are all the methods that the convertible can now inherit from car? So what do you think is the answer? Can it inherit all the three or is it uh, only some of them? It's 
someone unmute you can all unmute and answer the question so all the three yeah all the three. okay yeah since all the three are public uh, convertible can inherit all the three right so the uh, turn on engine function uh, use the uh, private uh, method uh, field so uh, would that be allowed in the convertible class so that is a basically indirectly it is using the private field yeah yeah that's okay so uh, you you inherit the public methods and the public methods can internally use the private uh, instance variables so that's okay but it cannot directly access any any of the private fields or private methods excuse me sir yes so what if it was the opposite so what if the methods were private yeah so and then what the variable is public yes sir yeah in that case uh, it will inherit the, it it'll only inherit all the public and protected uh, uh, methods or instance variables right so convertible so in this case it will inherit engine the instance variable engine but it will not inherit the three methods that uh, that are there here okay sir thank you so yeah you have your uh, okay the complete code here so you have the car uh, it has a private engine and then uh, the constructor and rest of the methods are defined here then the convertible extends car and um, it has a method called clean car so clean car is now um, having only one instruction which says that engine dot steam clean right so it's directly accessing the instance variable of uh, the car but because it is private it will this should not happen it will not have access to the private uh, methods or classes right so so the answer to this is false or it cannot have access because you are using engine which is a private instance variable of car uh, excuse me sir yes so so uh, when these methods get inherited in form, in what form do they get inherited in the sense like can it like for, for example any object cannot access its uh, classes private method a private method or private variables right hmm so in in the same way can any object of convertible access any of the methods of car which are uh, uh, which are okay to be inherited yeah it can access all the public and protected uh, methods as well as instance variables so there is no way in java in which you could access uh, you could inherit any methods of a super class and make it as your own private method no no you cannot change the access modifier in the subclass it has to be the same okay thank you sir so i think it can go higher but not lower but i'll have to check on that so for example if it's a protected one that you are inheriting i think you can say you can change it to public but you cannot change it to private no, so any object uh, sorry to interrupt so yeah. uh, any object can access the uh, any object of convertible can access let's say clean engine hmm. object uh, not the method can any yeah. object access clean engine yes yes so um so let's say you have convertible c equals new convertible so you create an instance of uh, convertible which is called c here now you can say c dot clean engine is that what you yeah 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 okay but okay. any object of car cannot access clean engine right no car objects cannot access it right? because clean engine is a method that is defined within car and it is protected so it's okay it can access but if it is a private one it cannot access so you cannot say say let's say you have car uh, ca or cr whatever and new car so you create a new instance of car and assign it to cr now you can say cr dot clean engine but let's say if uh, clean engine is private then you cannot say cr dot clean engine 
because it's a private uh, method. Right? Private methods and instance variables are accessible only within the class. So once you go out of it, you cannot access. So in that so case, uh, yeah. only the getters and setters will be used. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, you should only use the getters and setters. Okay. Sir, hello. Yes. Sir, in the subclass, if we override the inherited method, can we change the access modifiers? Yeah, yeah. So that was the question someone asked, right? So um, you should not do it uh, as a good practice, but I think you can go higher in the modifiers, but not lower. So if you inherit protected, right? So for example, you um, inherited protected, clean engine is protected, and convertible has inherited uh, clean engine. And when you override it, I think you can say, you can go higher and make it public, but you cannot make, go lower and say that uh, it's now private. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. Yeah, but yeah, please check or I, I should check. Me, I think it can go higher. Yeah, uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt. So yeah, so, what, so if any object can access protected also, then can you please explain again the difference between protected and public? Yes, so, um, so protected is accessible only for only by the this class which is car and its subclasses so for example there is uh, a class called uh, dog right so you have a car class and you have a dog class and um, or maybe it's outside of the Okay, so let's say you, you go outside of the package. Um, um, or not even that, okay. So let's say you are uh, in the in the dog class, you want to create an instance of the car class. Uh, say car C equals new car, and then you are saying that C dot uh, clean engine. And uh, maybe you should throw this in as well. So every so generally it's a good practice to put all these classes into what are called as packages. So packages group them uh, together. Uh, so generally a, a package contains all similar classes, which uh, provide similar functionalities. Right? Like uh, for example, there's a package on containers. So it contains uh, all the classes that are related to sorry collections. Yeah, there's a package for collections. So it contains all the collection related classes. Like say array list linked list and so on. Um, so now let's say car package, there's a package for car, which is let's say vehicle. And there's a package for dog, which is let's say animal. Uh, now you are trying to access this clean engine outside of this package. So by a class that is outside of this package. So car uh, is in vehicle and now uh, dog is in animal package. So these are two different packages and now you are trying to access this outside of in the different package, which is not possible in protected. But that is not the case in uh, public. So if it is public, it, you can also access it even outside of uh, the current package or in any package. Right. Uh, is that, uh, does that make sense? Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. So yeah, uh, just to summarize, so protected is accessible by the subclasses and within its own package. Okay. So the problem with this piece of code is it's trying to access the private instance variable of the superclass, which is not possible. So instead of that, um, you should do something like this. So you have a clean car method which is specific to convertible, but you want to, you can simply call the clean engine. You can, so in this case, you can use the, this keyword. So this refers to the current object, right? Whatever object has called it, called this particular method. So this refers to that particular object. So you can use this and then make the call to the method in, that is in the superclass. Excuse me, sir. 
yes so uh, if this uh, engineering thing was public and it was inherited and the all other methods were private can engine still access the methods uh this is within convertible yeah no no in convertible you cannot access uh, any private methods right uh, because whenever you say private the access is restricted to only within the class so you can only use them from within the class okay but engine is still part of the uh, car class so that won't change anything no no so you can do it the other way around so you can have the public methods and within the public methods you can access the private instance variable which is engine right because um, so the method belongs to this particular car so you can uh, it still counts as accessing this engine within the car class right but if you are making this public uh, and then this private so that wouldn't work okay thank you oh. so shall i more okay so i guess okay there are a couple of questions for you um so now there are four classes let's say lion tiger cat and leopards so if you have to make one of these classes as the parent for the other class which one would you choose cat yes so yeah that's right so you uh you end up choosing cats because that is the common characteristic among all the uh, other three right so lion is a cat tiger is a cat leopard is a cat so you have this easy relationship so that's why you make the cat as a super class and rest of them as a sub class for cat right so there's one more uh question and an exam so let's say you are given these diagrams um so except that one of them is not appropriate or legal with at least with respect to java so spot the one that is not uh, so you have three options here no let me know which one is uh, not appropriate at least with respect to java the b part B. Okay, so why is that the case? Yes. Multiple inheritance. It is not allowed in Java. Right, right. So yeah, you, you have this beagle. So now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this turtle arrow head it's point points to the super class. So now it's uh, indicating that beagle is a is a pet and beagle is a dog. So it, it is trying to inherit from more than one class, which are at the same level. so multiple direct inheritance is not possible so for example you can have um, beagle inherits from pet uh, and pet in can inherit from dog or the other way around so beagle can inherit from dog and dog can inherit from pet but you cannot have direct super classes more of more than one so that's the issue with uh, b here and uh, that's why b is not allowed in java So others are okay. Okay. So next we come to the third subtopic, which is overriding. Um. So one of the advantages of this inheritance is it can provide these uh, default method implementations, right? And uh, if the subclass is happy with the default implementation then it can use it and if it is not happy then it can override that implementation so in this case uh, there is a default implementation of drive in car which is that it can go at uh, 40 miles per hour but in the convertible we are not happy with this so we we are uh, saying that uh, the convertible car should go much faster than the speed of speed of the default car right so in this case we would like to override or give priority to the definition of the subclass so let's see how we do it 
So you have your convertible class and you are inheriting the drive method from the super class, which is car, right? But you are not happy that the default car goes only at uh, 40 miles per hour. So you want to make it 60 miles per hour. So you override the definition provided earlier with your own definition, right? You change the definition. And now this indicates that whenever uh, an instance of convertible calls drive, then automatically this implementation would be used and not the one that is from the car, right? And that is what it means by overriding it. So you give priority or preference to the definition that has been provided by the subclass, which is convertible, right? Does that uh, make sense? Like, do you have any questions? Okay, so the way to override is to first use exactly the same signature of the method that was already there in the super class. And then you provide this annotation called override, which we discussed like we discussed earlier. It's a signal or a hint to the compiler saying that uh, preference should be given to this one. Right. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, yes. So by uh, the method signature here, we mean uh, having the same access modifier also. Yes, so um, it's a good practice to keep the same access modifier um, and you should definitely not go lower. So for example, now if it is public void drive in car, so you cannot make this protected or private. So it has to be public. But on the other hand, if it is protected in the, sub, in the super class, I think you can make, uh, you can change it to public. So that I need to check, but I think you can go higher in the modifier, visibility modifier, but you cannot come down. But uh, the good practice is that you should not even change the visibility modifier, right? Keep it the way it is. So if you don't provide the definition and let's say you have a instance of convertible call drive, then it will use the definition that is provided by car. But now that you have overridden it, uh, if you use the instance of convertible and call drive, it will use this particular implementation. Right. Okay. Um, so what if you want to reuse some of the functionality of the parent class uh, the, for a particular method, but you also want to provide uh, slight modifications? So that's the case that we'll handle here. So you have your sedan class, which will extend the car. And now sedan also has a drive method, but it doesn't want to provide the exact functionality uh, that the car provides, right? So it, it wants to make a few modifications. So that's why we are overriding it. But we also want to reuse some of the functionality that the car provides. So in this case, you use a keyword called super so super always refers to the parent class and then call the drive method on super, right? Super dot drive. And then the ones in the black provide the functionality that is unique for sedan, right? So if you want to do this partial overriding where we want to reuse some of the functionality and then provide some new functionality, then you can do it in this way. So you use the super keyword and then call the uh, the super class method. So now it turns on engine, it drives, it adds um, this pin to the map, it drives a bit more and then the pin is added again. Right, are there any questions here? Okay. Ah, so there's a trivia question. So what would happen if we use this dot drive instead of super dot drive? Recursion. Yes, so it will result in recursion. So super refers to the parent class, right? This refers to the object instance uh, that is of the current class. So if you say this dot drive, it is same as calling the drive of sedan. So it will simply result in a recursion. So why would my super method is strongly discouraged? 
sorry what's it so why is the so why is the super keyword strongly discouraged it is no no it's not discouraged it is actually written in this line that's no where is it oh, we missed oh. it so uh, uh, when where it is written use it this keyword above that it is strongly discouraged second mm-hmm. point while you can use super ah, yeah, yeah 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 i got this ha uh-huh. why is that ah so so okay so um let's say you are not overriding it um and you are okay uh, we'll have to take one more example so let, let's say there is one more method here uh, called uh, break public void break um sorry yeah there is a public void break but uh, since you are inheriting from car let's say you have a turn off engine also so whenever you have a break uh, let's say okay, just for the sake of uh, the discussion right so you are calling the turn off engine right uh, so the break method is from the sedan turn off engine is from the car so in this case if you use this it is clear uh, right um, it is clear that turn off engine is from the car is coming from the car class and it's not in the not it's not of the sedan so you don't have to use super here right but in this particular case since you are referring to the same method uh, it is clear if you use super rather than this this would refer to the as we discussed the same uh, drive that is part of sedan and not the car so if you use this in the case of uh, brake then it's already clear right so it's clear that you are using the turn off engine from the inherited class so there is no need to use super but it's okay to use super. i mean there's no uh, so if you do if you use super there is no harm even in the, in that case so it just makes things clear so yeah i'm not sure why it is strongly discouraged actually because even in the example that i gave right which is brake and uh, turn off engine if you use super dot turn off engine it actually makes things clear so it it makes things clear that okay you are now using the turn off engine of the super class rather than the um the method that has been inherited and used in a subclass uh, okay but let me check this i'll check this and see if there are other reasons why uh, it is strongly discouraged right but um, even in this other example that i gave i still feel that uh, uh, there is no harm in using super but i i can i'll get back i'll check if there are other reasons and then i uh, we can discuss it in the next class. So are there any other questions so uh, yeah 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 so uh, when there is multi level in- inheritance in the sense like uh, when we had an example like car convertible porsche then in that case uh, if i access if i write super from porsche from the class porsche so where will uh, that super give a reference to no that's the issue right so we don't have multiple inheritance right So, so it's already multi level, like, multi level, not multiple, multi level, like class to convert. Well, super is always so it always goes one level higher. Oh, okay, thank you, sir. Hmm. Okay, so let's um, discuss this method resolution and then we can stop. Okay, so let's say uh, so we we have this drive method. um with of porsche class right so now uh, there is also the drive method of convertible and then there is also a drive method of car so if you have an instance of porsche and if you call drive then the question is which particular drive is it calling because uh, you are inheriting so car's drive method is inherited to convertible and convertible's drive is also inherited to porsche so now you have uh all the drives 
so to say here it has porsche has access to all the bits but um, you can also have the override right you can also use override and then give priority to the drive of porsche so when you use the instance of porsche and call drive then the method that you de defined in porsche gets called so it goes from bottom to the top so it walks up the class hierarchy right so it starts at the bottom and then it will look for the method so let's say you call brake so if porsche has brake it will use the brake of porsche if porsche does not have brake it will look for it in the convertible class if the convertible class has brake method then it will use it if it does not have then it will move one level high one level up and then check it in the car class so it will keep moving up so that's how the method gets resolved right um so if it doesn't find even in the car class then it will result in a error compared to so in this case if you they if you create an instance of porsche and then call the uh, let's say p p dot drive then the drive method of uh, this particular porsche class gets called right uh, but if you say p dot top down since top down is not here it look for top down in the super class since it is here it will use that and if let's say top down is not even in the convertible class it will go one level high and if it's in the car class it will uh, call the top down of that class right so that's how the method resolution happens so yeah it will keep moving up yeah and finally so from here it moved up and it found top down and now it can call or use the definition of the top down here right so with that i'll uh, stop here